This device here is called a piezoelectric transducer. It's a small little patch of a ceramic here on top of a brass underlay with wires, one from the ceramic, one from the underlay. These devices are incredibly interesting. What happens is when you apply a voltage to them, they mechanically stress, so they can expand or contract in this case because it's free to move. And vice versa is also true. If you compress them, then you get a voltage out. They're very precise, they're very compact. And in this one, the entire setup, including soldering and wiring, costs less than 50p. This is amazing and very interesting in terms of applications and technology. So I want to talk about them. I'm going to start with the early history of the piezoelectric effect. So firstly, how was this discovered? Let's begin our story at the turn of the 19th century. We'll say just after Alessandro Volta has made his voltaic pile a reliable way to produce electricity through chemical means. And slightly later in 1831, Faraday invents his electric dynamo, a reliable way of generating power. This sets our scene. We're coming into this age and we're finding out new ways to generate electricity and new ways to use it. So then, in the mid 18th century, another way was found called pyroelectricity, which is electricity generated by heating or cooling a material. And another idea that was floated around would be that there may be some materials which showed a relationship between a mechanical force acting on them and an electrical force. And then in 1880, Pierre and Jacques Curie found it. What they demonstrated was materials that generated a mechanical force when an electric current is applied to them. There are a couple of major difficulties with finding this effect. Firstly, what materials to search for. However, the Curies had an extensive knowledge of crystal structure, which allowed them to predict likely candidates. The second difficulty with this is that the expansion predicted by the effect is incredibly tiny. The Curie's paper on the subject predicts around a thousandth of a micron. However, the Curies had a couple of ingenious plans. First of all, they held the material so it could not expand. This meant the crystal generated a pressure which they could then measure. They used a setup where a change in pressure developed an electric discharge which they could measure with an electrometer. They also used a long, thin plate of piezoelectric. This would show a far greater expansion than that of a metal block because of movement along the thin plate. It shows great skill because the manufacture of that material would not have been a trivial process. They went on to demonstrate the effect in many materials, for example tourmaline and rochelle salt. However, they didn't demonstrate the inverse initially. The idea that applying a mechanical stress would then produce an electrical force. Instead, Gabriel Lippmann used conservation laws and mathematical ideas to predict that this would happen. The Curies then confirmed this effect shortly after. So that was the discovery, and brings to a close the first chapter of the history of bits of electrics. You have a simple effect, applying a voltage causing mechanical stress, and applying a mechanical stress causing a voltage. So next time I'll explain an important early use of this effect, where we're going to have a quick talk about sonar.